Good morning to you. It's Saturday the 24th of May 2014. This morning's United Kingdom... Oh, I noticed my little um uh, thing with the phone number and that hasn't come up. Why is that then? Just a minute. Let me find that. Oh, phone number thing. Where's that now? It's it more and more complicated to do this blooming thing. It really does. Uh, no phone. Where's your blooming phone number gone? Oh, effects. Text over video and ding! There we are, the phone. <laughs> phone number and the Skype in has appeared. If you feel the need to, to give us a call or something later on, it's all up there if you're watching the show live. All right. Uh, the Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Give us a call on that and uh, you can talk to me this morning, all right? And there's a local London phone-in number as well. 20 6358 I'm hoping this morning to talk to a Barry Manilow fanalo, boys and girls. A fanalo, a much, a much more experienced fan. That doesn't mean she's older, because she's not, okay? Horror has just filled her head. If she's with us, I'm not quite sure what time she's going to be joining us this morning. But I'm hoping to be called by a fanalo who has not just been to one concert of the Barry Manilow season this year. No. She's been to quite a few. I'm only going to two. I've already been to one at Wembley. Wembley! Wembley! I've already been to one. And I'm going on Monday as well to the one at the O2, taking my lovely aunts. Auntie Brenda and uh, Auntie Rena Rini, who will never have seen anything like this. I know I go on about it, and I know you'll probably be sitting there, oh, going on about Barry Manilow again. Oh, how can you go there and sit and see Barry Manilow? If only you would go and experience it, you would know what I'm talking about. Don't sit there making up your own minds at a, our awful it must be and how cheesy and this that and the other you have got to go please just go once just go once to a Barry Manilow concert and I will be very happy and then you can tell me how wonderful it was and if you do choose to sit there you might choose to sit there and while everyone up around you is dancing, then let me tell you, you will be the one that feels left out. And I have actually seen it, you know. Usually men, slightly older than myself, or probably the same age, actually, a little bit fatter, a little bit fatter than myself. And uh, I have seen them there with their wives and people like that, and occasionally sitting down wondering what the hell is going on. You have to go to a Manilow concert. And I'm so pleased that Wendy is on the line now. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning. Uh, lovely How are you? To, uh, lovely to hear your little voice. Up in Lancashire, aren't you? Yes. In Leyland, Leyland. Leyland. just outside of Preston. Drive a British car with British <laughs> Leyland super deal. Uh, what have happened to those wonderful jingles that we used to have on the telly? Oh, I know. <laughs> now, I remember you know, those. We both, the age. we both know... Someone who used to write advertising jingles, don't we? We do. So, yes, Mr. Manilow himself. Wendy is a fanalo. She is a she is a hard, hard fanalo. Even more of a fan than myself. I will say that. How many concerts have you beaten altogether? Do you know? Um, six. Oh, oh what do you mean? Since I started going? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Back in the day. Back in the day when I, 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 I was just a listener at that point. I had the albums. Yeah. You know the double, you know the double white album? I do. White, the very I know best it well. of Barry the Manilow. Hits. Which I ordered. It, that was one of those records. That was one of those double LPs that was advertised on the telly. You could only at that time buy it on the telly. It wasn't KTL, was it? I can't remember, to be honest. It was that long ago. You know, it's like 33 years yeah. ago. <laughs> so I, I, I it's was not longer. I mean, I loved him, but I was only a listener then, I'm afraid. Only a listener. And it's only in the last three years that I've started going and seeing him. Mm. How many do you reckon you've been to altogether? Um, about 34. 34. That's nothing mm. compared to some of our other ladies, is it? No, I know. Some have been 500 plus times. 500 times. Wow. <sighs> And isn't it nice 
that you make all these friends with people that keep going. That to is stop. the most incredible thing yeah. experience of this particular tour. It's just been amazing mm. meeting so many wonderful, warm, friendly, helpful people. How many concerts is he doing in the UK? Eight altogether. He's doing eight altogether. How many have you been to? Six. It's not bad, is it, eh? I've been to six. Did a, I've done a lot of driving. and I, I should have been going tonight because I've got tickets for tonight, but the driving just... I'm just totally exhausted, and I woke up with a bit of a migraine yesterday. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Bit of a really nasty headache, and I knew it was heading for a migraine. Right. But I, I've, I've made mis I've just made the decision that I wasn't going to go today and just uh, have a rest. Today and uh, tomorrow, of course. You're not you're not going anywhere. To it's not anywhere tomorrow, is it? Sunday. No, uh, no. But I'll be driving down to London tomorrow. Right. Okay. For the old, you know, heading for the ho the last concert, the O2 concert. Lovely. But, I love the little newspaper articles you've been posting on your Facebook, um, showing about just walking around the streets, popping in it, and out of shops, and then he had a yeah, pub. Yeah, he's just, he's just so relaxed here. Yeah, and a pub, mm, uh, a pub lunch. He had a pub lunch, didn't he? That's right, yeah. Fish and chips. Does he eat anything? <laughs> you wouldn't think so to look at him, would you? No, I mean, I, I look at him and I'm thinking, how do you lose, how do you keep that weight off like that? Mind you, I've done all right myself, you know, keeping it off. But You've that's, done that's very a, well. Another part of the show, I'll talk about that a bit later on. We're talking about Barry at the moment. So you've seen six concerts. Now, when you go and see so many concerts of the same person, which I'd be very happy to, you never get bored. You know, you never get bored. You could be on, the, on, well, on, on a show every night and I'd be happy to go every night. But... Um, presumably you see the same show all the time in exactly the same order? Not at all. Oh, no? Not at all. Go on. No, because, especially when it comes to the UK... Yes. He knows that thousands of us, got, you know, follow him around the country yeah. to attend the concerts. And he, and he knows that. He's, he's known it for years. And um, he'll change the show. He'll change two or three songs in, an, uh, in the set in the night... Just for us, really. That's great, um, isn't it? Um, and then, the, you know, the uh, civilians, as he calls them. <laughs> civilians. Uh, they, yeah, the people you know, that, they just go the once. Yeah. Yeah. They tend to just go the once, but, um, you know, the, it, it was quite an incredible experience. I, w I went to the Ipswich concert, and it was an open-air concert. Right. And um, didn't rain, I, was, did it? I didn't have a, I didn't have a very good seat. I must say, I was glad to be there. Don't get me wrong, because yeah. I know there's, there's people that would have loved to have been there and couldn't make it. So I was glad to be there, but the seat, my seat wasn't very good at all. I was miles away from the stage. Okay. Um, but I, and I was sat in the um, the non fan bit, so yes. I got you know I like to chat to people wherever I am, and I got chatting, and they were all very very friendly, very interested in in what was going on and it was just it was just amazing but hearing people the comments at the end of the concert and people saying I didn't it, I had to laugh really because um, one guy said I really didn't think he'd be that good no that, you see this is the thing when you say to people oh, yeah I'm going to see Man and, oh you're not are you they just don't, they don't get it no, they won't no. even try you've got it. to go yourself if you ever get chance to go and see him please go yeah yeah, you know. there, there are people like that. You know, I've got to say, my my best friend, friend Ron, sometimes, you know, I'll say, to, oh, no, no, I don't want, don't want that. Well, why don't you just, no, no, I don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear it. You know, he was like that with the um, Eurovision uh, winner, you know, Conchita. Yes, yes. You know, I played it in the car and he's like, and he looked over and on the little, because you know, like the CD players in the car, they have little uh, writings. What's, yes. What is it? text writings saying what it is and he looked over and he saw saw the word eurovision after three notes had been played oh get that off get that shh, shh, you know shh, get that shh, <laughs> get that off i said well don't you want to no get that off now and you know wouldn't even try listening and that, mm. I, I find that very strange when mm. people just won't try. And there's mm. so many people that just won't try. You know, one of the managers that I work for at the Mayflower, he's a lovely chap, actually, Paul. 
the Mayflower is the place I do the quiz at on them um, Tuesday nights in Rotherhive. And um, whenever I see him, he will make some Barry comment because he knows that I love his stuff. He will always, oh, Chris, um, did, did you manage to get a couple of those T-shirts? I said, no, 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 I, I will get them. Or, I, you know, I've given him a CD before. You know, I've had a spare CD and I've given it. I said, what do you think of the CD? She said, oh, it's wonderful. I've got it up there right next to my television. And do you know what? The cup doesn't even mark the table anymore. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and he, he says things like that, but nothing nasty. But there are people that they just won't try it. If only you would go and try it. We don't sit down at a Barry oh, Manilow concert. You know, concert. people can sit and laugh and mock all they want. Yeah. But when they go and see him... Yeah, yeah. ...live on stage, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Did you see that boy from One Direction? Who's that one that sleeps with everyone? Which one is it? Don't ask me. <laughs> the, with that hair, the moppy hair. I'm not really into one um, direction. Harry Styles. Oh, Harry yeah. Styles, the one that... Oh, he's cute. He sleeps with him. And um, I saw him once, a picture of him, with a Barry Manilow T-shirt yes. on. And i tell you who else did that as well, um, if I can just think of his name. He's a jazz, mu a jazz pianist. Um, oh, damn, I can't remember his name now. I've seen he's it as well. well known. Yeah. Um, was he black? No. Oh, it wasn't black. Oh, no. No. It wasn't him, then. Uh, no. Um, Jamie Cullen. Jamie Cullen. OK. Jamie Cullen, yeah. Yeah, Jamie Cullen. He's a jazz pianist, really. He had the T-shirt well. And he's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Mm. But he was quite happy wearing a Barry Manilow T-shirt, making yeah. one of his videos. Yeah. I, I never forget two of my um, uh, friends. I haven't spoken to them for quite some time now. But uh, I remember sitting, I think that was at the last time at the O2. I was about four throwback. And um, or is a call just trying to come in there? Uh, I'll. Uh, Chris, I've lost you. No, no. Can you call in a minute, please? Uh, because I'm on a call at the moment, so I can't take this call. Um. Uh. Yes. And these two people texted me. Where are you sitting? I said, Well, I'm I'm near the front. Where are you? Oh, we're in a in in a what are those boxes called? Celebrity box. Yeah, I know, I know, I know what you mean. Where business people go and they have a box. Yeah. Oh, what's that called? Um, I can't think of it myself. No, I can't remember. But if 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 you're a business owner or something, you might hire one of these boxes, or you get given it by the by uh, by the company or whatever. And they go up there, and I waved, and I waved. I said, "Are you having a good time?" You know, this, this was before the show starts. I'm like, what are you doing here? Oh, we managed to get these tickets for nothing or whatever, so we've come up here and the vodka is throwing freely. Mm -hmm. right? So, obviously, there's no halfway through the show. They said, it's an, oh, we're, we're, we'll try and catch up halfway through. I said, well, there, was, there won't be a halfway. Mm -hmm. Well, there was always a halfway. I said, no, Barry doesn't have a halfway. He goes right the way through. He doesn't like An hour to break and 40 it up. Minutes. You know, because sometimes, you know, you break up a show, it doesn't matter what it is, and you lose the momentum. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, that's why he used to do... He used to have the intervals. Yes. And that's the reason why he stopped doing them. Yes, yeah. So, um... Uh... So, at the end of the show, I said, did you, uh, did you like it? And the answer was, uh, the vodka just keep flowing. We didn't see that much of it. And I thought, well, what's the bloody, bloody old point of you going to see it then? If, oh, yeah, yeah, but, but the drink was all free. They weren't interested in the show at all. I think people like that should be banned from going to see Barry Manilow. Absolutely so do I. There was, a, there's, totally there's, there's banned. Some, some disruption at Ipswich with people getting drunk. I was, oh, it's awful. There mm. was there was a couple, um, a few people down when I was at like, the O2 last time. I remember that near the front. And they were a little bit a little bit pissed as well mm. and it's just you know doesn't matter whether it's Manilow or whatever show you go to no, it doesn't. you know how, how dare you you know interrupt other people's pleasure like that you know by getting drunk I don't think you should have drinking in theatres it's all wrong isn't it it's all wrong yeah changing yeah just talking about that I don't know I, I love Peter Kay changing the subject a bit I love Peter Kay and I was watching a video of his when he did the the arena tours in I think it was 2011 yes and he he was you could see that he was having having problems with people. They were absolutely legless. Yes. I, I, I'm talking on the front row. Really. 
Yeah, absolutely. Nah, like and the way, well, the, the, you tra- could see the security guard having to more or less carry people out. It was just awful. Oh, that's terrible. That's disgusting. Mm, I, I, I think it is. It's, just, it's disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, it is disrespectful. Talking at the front and all that. But anyway, like, so well, let's go back to this. Now, tell me, was there so far, because we've still got one to go at the O2, of course, um, which has been your favourite one so far? Well, this, I have to say two. I can't just... It's okay. really difficult to pick one. But I have to say two. First of all, my hometown of Manchester. Yeah. That was just amazing. And he did an encore. He's not done an encore um, apart from that time at Manchester. And he sang Old Friends and uh, Forever and a Day. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he sang that at the end. And the cra- it was just packed. The uh, the um, phones for you arena in Manchester it seats twenty six thousand people and yeah. it was packed to the rafters. Yeah, and the the atmosphere was just incredible. Right, but the one that capped it for me was just, Glasgow. Just a second. The, Some someone's still trying to call in. I can't take a call while I'm on a call. Whoever that is trying to call in, there. and so if you want to uh, try after we finish chatting to Wendy, then then I'd be happy to take your call. All right, carry on, Wendy, my darling. That's okay. Um, yeah, Glasgow, um, it was just, it was, it, the, the show was incredible, but more so, the, sound. the Scottish, the Scottish people are just, just wonderful people, yeah. and I got to meet about, you know, people that I've been chatting to on Facebook, yes, and that, and I got to meet them face to face, and it was, they're so warm and friendly, and, you know, the they helped me out. I was in. I got a bit into a bit of a mess with a car park and trying to get out because they had no change and somebody gave me some money. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. Somebody actually gave me some money uh, That's cool. to, to help me. And there was another lady that wasn't very well. I'm not going to mention her name and I'm not going to say what was wrong with what's wrong with her. But um, she wasn't. She's not very well and she, you know, she she's on strong medication. But bless her, I, I parked away from the arena and I came out of the arena and couldn't really find which way. I needed to go back to the car. Right. Because I'm not familiar with Glasgow. And yeah. her and a friend walked me back to the car. Bless her. I was just so touched because she's not very well. Yeah. And obviously in quite a bit of discomfort. But she actually, the, her and a friend actually walked me back to the car so I got back safe. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, hey? Yeah. And, you know, uh, I was just so, they were just so lovely and it was just so lovely to meet them. We got bumped into a, we went into a, a hotel, I can't remember, the, I think it was the Crown Plaza. Oh, that sounds Glasgow. posh, bit posh for you, isn't it, Wendy? I always put you down as a sort of, I always put you down as a sort of travel lodge girl. What are you trying to say? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure you don't mean? Are you trying to say in, my, my love? <laughs> <laughs> did did they, Wendy? Did did they have a camp in sight nearby that hotel you just mentioned? <laughs> Or a little caravan, babe. A little caravan, my <laughs> darling. <laughs> or were you outside the front? You know when you see those people at Christmas, <laughs> just after Christmas time? You set me off giggling now. They're, 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 waiting, they're waiting for the sows, you know what I mean? And they're sitting on a load of newspapers <laughs> with a cardboard box over them, waiting for the sows. Was that you waiting for the concert to start? I did see you in the picture. Uh, I tell you what, I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, anyway, so we met in this Crown Plaza <laughs> hotel and we met, and we, you know, one of them bought me a cup of coffee, bless them, because they could see I was tired and ready to go back home. Yeah. And it was just, they're just amazing people. They really are amazing people. I just love them to bits. Good. All of them. Oh, fantastic. And it was such a pleasure to meet you too. And you too. And I'm going to see you again Monday um, when I'm, for the first time, I'm taking my two aunts to see. And they, 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 they will never have seen. Now, one of my aunts, uh, she runs a dance school. She, she's in her 80s now. Um, she's very able. Uh, she got the uh, unfortunately the diabetes, but she controls it with uh, diet. Which is she's not fat. This is what I don't understand. Yeah, I don't think you need to be. You don't fat. have to be fat to get diabetes, do you? All oh, right, okay. I didn't see. I didn't know that. No, you don't, don't have to. Know. You don't have to be over, overweight to get diabetes right, okay. necessarily. Anyway, so but she's very um, able, and she runs a, a dance called called Super Arts. Mm. in South London, where the, um, uh, uh, the parents parents are always moaning how much it costs. Do you know she runs at a loss? Yeah, 
Oh, she dear. actually runs that as a loss to give the children something. Oh, bless. Yeah, wonderful. Oh. And there are all these little children, I think from, from little going up to, I think about 18. And she puts on a show once every two years, which I went to see the last one. I don't know if you remember me talking about that. Um, ooh, that yes, must, I do, yeah. Must have been sometime last year, early last year, perhaps, or maybe... No, no, because it was hot. Summer last year it was. And... Um, and she works damn hard, she does, and, and mm. runs it at a loss. She really does. But she gets a lot out of it, you see. When, mm. when you get, it's when job you, satisfaction. Yes. When you get to be showing someone young how mm. to do something, or they look up to you. You know, over the years mm. I've had people come up, oh, we like the way you do this, Chris, and that, and I'd really like to do that. And then late, years later you see them, and they've done better than you. They, they they get on better than you. I know people that have got um, proper, I, I say proper, you know, proper radio shows on mm. FM radio now. I know DJs that work in much bigger clubs than me now that came to me when I was in a mm, small, medium-sized club and said, oh, I want to do this. And they they also have come to me throughout time and said, oh, we're going to give up. You know, we can't get anywhere. No, keep doing it. And then they, they go on to be something good, much, much, much bigger than, than what I do. And I love it. I love it. You must, mustn't be jealous. I know some people that are jealous because of people have done better than you. You mustn't be jealous. You must be pleased for them. And yeah, they are I, doing that because you gave them encouragement. Absolutely. How fantastic. You know, and little jobs Absolutely. like, and other jobs like that, I would assume, you know, with great job satisfaction, perhaps uh, a, a school teacher, you know, to yeah. teach a little one who, who couldn't read and now they can read because of you or yeah. swimming or anything, anything like that. I, I just think it's great. And that's what my aunt does. And she's very able um, because of that. And you know what? I think that's what keeps her going because her husband, my uncle, died a few years ago. And uh, the, the, my aunt, by the way, she lives in Kennington, which is in London. Not the best part of London, you know, Kennington. Um, and I, I think it's what keeps her going, you know, doing all that business. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. And I'm looking forward to meeting them both. Yeah, you will do. They, they've never yeah. seen anything like it, I tell you. Yeah. Nice to speak to you, Wendy. <laughs> Great talking to you too, and I'll see you on Monday. Look forward to seeing you Monday. Bye-bye, my love. See you, bye-bye. There we are, Wendy. Great Fanalo. She loves the Fanalo. Right, now, who was that trying to call in? You can call in now if you want to. A line is open. A line is open. Marge in Oklahoma is with us this morning as well. Good morning, Marge. Or this afternoon. What is it? 20, 25 minutes past 12 o'clock. My, um... My blooming second hand has stopped on that big clock, so I've had to be, bring another one in today. Now, who's trying to call in? Call in now, please. There we are. That's ringing now. Good morning. Who's on line two? Hello. 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 It's, uh, I'm only your sixth time caller. It's your best friend, Ron. Oh, good morning, best friend, Ron. How are you oh, today? Good morning, dear. And how are you on this fine, fine Saturday morning? Let me just push up your volume a little bit. Oh, I can't hear you. Am I a bit quiet? It's because it's because of my dulcet tones. Your dulcet tones? I was just talking what? about you, actually. Was you? Yes, I was. Oh, let me just let me just turn you down on the computer, dear. Oh yes, yeah. I can hear I myself I several times, which to me isn't really a punishment. You know, I quite like listening to myself, as you know. Yeah, yeah. You often come round and watch yourself on my fifty-five inch television, which 55 is five inch. Fifty-five inch Sanyo television with webs and apps and everything. There's so much on that telly, you can't even work it. That's correct, darling. That's correct. <laughs> now, I've been listening to your. I've been listening to your little hobby show, dear. Hob and, what do you um, mean hobby. Yes, you're Did, correct about Barry Manilow. It is an amazing show. Me personally, I never really listened to Barry Manilow before. Before uh, you know, we went to see him, and he does admittedly put on a very, very good show. You know, when I um, first said to you, "Do you want to come to?" Did you sort of? Did you come because I'd asked you to? No, no, no. Do you, you remember I bought the ticket? Uh, I bought the tickets to the birthday present. Do you remember? Yeah, the Vegas one. But the, the Vegas o one, yeah. The O2 one. Did you buy those as well? Yes, I did, dear. Oh, I can't remember now. We were up in the gods on that one, weren't we? We were Love right it. up high. Do you remember that big fat bloke in front of us who just sat down for the entire performance looking around? <laughs> but, yeah, no, but as I was saying, dear, before you interrupted me, oh. you know... 
Barry Manilow does put on a very, very good show with the orchestra and the backing singers and stuff. You know, obviously, because of his age, he can't move around as much as he used to. But then that's to be expected. But, you know, in, but he, he seems effort, 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 I can't even say the word, dear, with, without any effort. Yeah, you know yeah, I, mean? yeah I remember you saying that when he was singing. Because I don't know if you've ever noticed, his mic is down at his stomach. It's miles yeah. away yeah, from he's, his he's mic. Absolutely effortless for him. Yeah, and you before know, people... His face doesn't move because of the surgery, but in general, you know, he, he, you can see that he, he, it's, a, it's a gift. It's an absolute gift. It's a talent. It's like my talent, talking. Oh, well, that's not really a talent, dear. That's more of an irritation. Sorry, dear? Now, now you were saying about me in the car with the, with the Eurovision. Oh, yes. Now, I understand what you're saying about trying new things and listening to new things. The thing is, is the, the Eurovision, I have, I have absolutely no interest in it. I never have done. And, you know, I understand that you like to, to show me new things, but with the Eurovision, there's, there's certain things that I... I really just am not have no interest in whatsoever, and and the, unfortunately, you know, you know, friends friends have disagreements, and you know, they don't always, you know, I don't, we, have we ever had very a boring, I don't think we've very had... boring if we like everything of, of each other. We, we've never had a no disagreement if we did in clothes and 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 things like that. You know, you hate shopping. Oh yes. You know, I, I and I try uh, not just to, a minute, just not, a minute. I try not to ram that down your throat, dear. Just a minute, you know, I don't hate I've shopping. I've never wanted to fall out with you. Shut over, up for anything. Oh God. You know, but the Eurovision. You shut know, up! Shut up! No interest in it whatsoever, dear. I'm I'm sorry. You know, it's just one of those things. Well, you know? I seem it's it, 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 the shopping thing. Well, I seem to be all right with uh, Prince Jimmy of Woodall. We we went shopping quite well together. Yeah, uh, no. It's in fact, it, 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 he was able to do things in uh, while I was shopping that you were unable to do, such as force me to buy over expensive T-shirts that I didn't want to buy. Yeah, but that, was, that, that was in America. But I mean, in general, in, in general, you know, you know, you're, you're not, you're just, you know, to buy new clothes, you go to George of Asda, you know, <laughs> and, and, and to me, you know, that is scraping the bottom of the barrel, Excuse darling. Excuse me. I'm not one to, I'm not one to, I can see what you're doing. I've, oh, can you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vile, dear, vile. I have got a very nice Ben Sherman mauve shirt on today. And the reason... I know. The reason I'm... Bl- you, you half blend into the background, dear. You look like you don't have no body. Ah, uh, yes. Well, the reason I've got the mauve shirt on today is, of course, because I've now got my new mauve piece of material for the backdrop. Uh, for, but I, have, I haven't had time to put it up yet. For the supporting of... But, eh? UKIP's favourite favorite political party... But, well, I, I think, I think after yesterday's Dad's Army video, I think I'm going to become UKIP's favourite celebrity. Yeah, you could be, you could be there, there. You know, like um, Tony Blair had that one that sang Things Can Only Get Better. Yeah, yeah, that could be me. That yeah, could that, be me. that'll be you, dear. I'm going to be on those big posters and people will be happy to throw eggs at them. <laughs> yeah, well, they're happy to throw eggs at you now, dear. To be Sorry? You know, but uh, you know, getting back to the subject about you know th- th- things that people don't like. Yes. I mean, you know, it's just it's just people's differences, dear. You know, it's just some people don't like something, and some people do. You know, there's no there's, there's no need to fall out over it. Unfortunately, you know, it would be a very very boring world if we all like the same things. You know, but just because you like something, it doesn't mean that somebody else has to. It's no, the same but as just because I like something, it doesn't mean that you have to. But I would like but you, you could be if quite you could blunt just, about things as well, dear. You if know, you could, you could just be very sample it. Just dear. sample, just sample, <laughs> little Conchita. She's lovely, dear. Lovely song. No, right. You know, like, like the a art phoenix. that I want to buy for, 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 for my house, fluorescent palace. I showed you oh. that, and you were so dismissive. The same as what I was. So it, it, you know, we're all the same, dear. No, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I looked at the artwork for your for your house, and you said, "What do you think?" And I said, "I didn't like it." Whereas the CD I put in your thing, you there were three notes that played. You looked over, you saw the I word saw Eurovision, Eurovision yeah, and I you said, no, "Take I, it." I had no interest in that. But I you didn't. No you didn't I try. I don't want to listen to it. I here. tried your pictures, but you wouldn't try my music. Yeah, no, uh, because it's it's Eurovision, dear. Is you, I, I have no interest in that fixed competition that is just another waste of taxpayers' money that we pour into it, dear. Anything to do with the euro, anything that we need to... The euro needs to go. It all needs to... <laughs> I, I wish the western side of Europe would just sink into the sea, dear, with the Germans <laughs> with it. 
Hello. Are you still there, dear, or have you fallen asleep? I'm still here, darling. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, uh, you know, uh, my eyes are starting to glaze over now, to be honest. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. <laughs> are you alone today, or is that cat in there? No, I have a cat sitting right in front of me. Oh, um, what, and what did you rather was... have to the other day? Would you like to tell us all what's happened in your bedroom? No, I don't. I don't wish to, to, to discuss that on radio, thank you. Eh? I don't wish to discuss that on radio, thank you. I'm going to buy a new bed. The cat accident, dear. The cat accident. Yeah, the cat accident. Well, that's... that's well, I mean, mind you, there's only six people watching, dear. Sorry? That many, that many, it won't go around that quickly with six people watching, dear. It's six million. They don't six, put the word five. million oh, there. Oh, down to five, dear. <laughs> Five people. Oh, by the way, some good news for you. And yeah, I, I'm not quite sure how he knows this, but um, Matt Martins, regular viewer in Canada. Do you know anyone in Canada, lovey? Do you know anyone? Um, in I think I do. Do you? Oh, well, who are they called then? What do they do? Um, no? I Can't think you remember. Met him. Do you remember my friend Mark? Many, many years ago, oh. straight boy that used to, when I lived, when I lived in that um, expensive grade two listed building on Columbia Road. Oh, what a um, dump. Do you remember? Yeah, not the flat, the area, the dump. The oh, dump the area. known as Shoreditch. Was, was what a dump. Um, he lived a couple of doors down. He was uh, short and tubby. I'm sure you, you actually, you look a bit like him, short and tubby. Um, yeah, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm you imagine he lives in Canada. Oh, right, yes. So, yeah, what was you going to say about the, What's the good news then, dear? Well, Matt Martins, although I'm not quite sure if he's right, he sent me a little congratulatory thing, congratulating me for my. Go and have a guess. Boys Award. No. Marriage. For my 1,000th video. Oh, yes, that's true, dear. Because you have... I can see it on your... Where it says subscribe. 1,002 videos, dear. Well, that's... I, I've looked and it says 978 uploads. So I don't know how that works. Well, you're, that, that, well I think that's going to be on your gravestone, dear. Oh, I don't know how that works. What, a thousand, a thousand videos? I hope there's going to be a few more than that. Do you mean I'm going no, to die you now? On no, air? You, that, you say that quite often. Hmm, I wonder how that works. How does it work? I don't really work? know how that works. I how do does like it that work? when you say those things, dear. I don't know how it works. Uh, you do make me giggle, dear. You do make me giggle. <laughs> so, welcome. One thousand videos. Can you just imagine the pleasure people must have watching those back to back? I wonder how long it would take. Mass mm, suicide, dear. Eh? Marge says that Ron out talks me. I don't think so. I hardly say a word. Yeah. And uh, Simon on the Isle of Wight says, uh, Simon and his little fam. Simon, is that a picture of you with. Um... Surely not. Oh, can't remember a name. The little black lady who sings with lots of hair. Who, me or you? No, who's that Who's that lady? Little black lady sings lots of hair. River Deep, Mountain High. Oh. Uh, Edith Perez. No. Tina Turner. Is that oh. a picture of you with Tina Turner or is it a waxwork, Simon? He's just sent a little picture. Me? He says, me or you? No, Simon. Simon, who's just written in, he's messaged Ron on a rant. Tell him to chill out, it's the weekend. Yeah, chill oh, I out. I am chilled. I am chilled, dear. I'm very chilled. I'm chill very late back today. Chill I'm out. actually laying on the sofa with my feet up because my back's hurting. So have, have you told your viewers about my bad back? No, you carry on and tell them. Oh, I've, had, I've got this terrible bad back. How many people am I? Oh, 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 oh there's six people now. Yeah, I have this terrible bad back and I'm, they've got to insert a, tit a titanium rod into my back. I'm not going to be able to walk for about eight weeks. Titanium? So is that, is is that worth... going to around in a buggy. Is that worth something, titanium? Oh, yes, dear. I wouldn't have something cheap, cheap inserted well, into can me. I, can I have it when you're dead? Uh, no, darling, because you're going first. I'm not going you're first. You're going to have to push me around in a buggy so you can walk around the town. I've got a buggy. I've got a buggy. I've got a buggy. Get out of the um, way. I've got a buggy. I've got a buggy. Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. Well, it will be, dear. It will be. Now, so, uh, Daniel's with us in Camberley. Good morning, Daniel. He says, Hi, Daniel Hi, Chris. in Camberley. Da Daniel was half an hour late for the show. He says, does Ronnie really skint? I don't... You might want... I don't know, get that. Does Ronnie really skint? I, I hardly say a word. I don't know. What, what, what does that mean? We're not sure what that means, Daniel. Please rephrase the question. Okay. Is my, is, 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 is my little admirer on, online? 
Uh, no, he, he's never with us live. Uh, little oh. Brandon, bless his heart. He's trying to get a job. He's going to be a cleaner. He, want, he loves cleaning. He's the same as you, actually. He loves cleaning. Oh, I just like everything to be clean and tidy, dear. He abs is always clean. He goes around and cleans his grand's flat. And oh, I thought, that's what, nice. Oh, I that's thought, lovely. what a nice boy. That, he gets lots of brownie points for that one, dear. That's, that's a well, very wait, good thing. Wait, I haven't finished. Wait for it. So he does that, and I think that's a nice thing to do, and she pays him for it. So sort of then, you know, my estimation oh. then dropped down a little bit once little he's budgeted the money. Bless him. Little if he was b- 10 years older, I'd probably take him out on a date if I wasn't married to my Andy. Oh, how lovely. How Bless lovely. Him. Tell us about that cat again. What's it the cat done? No, I don't want to de- announce it on radio. <laughs> Why not? OK, well... Andy, the other day, my Andy's, other half, Andy's his other half. Uh, rushed out the house in a rush, as usual, and locked little Ralph in the bedroom. Yes. And Ralph has pulled up uh, £2,000 worth of carpet, new carpet, and I couldn't get in the bedroom. And when I got in there, the poor little stud had peed on the bed, on, oh. my, on my Hungarian goose duvet, and my 500 <laughs> count bed linen, and my, my goose down mattress topper. So, you know, I, I had lots to do took me over an hour to sort out and wash everything and take everything to the cleaning, so I was very, very upset. And the poor little cat, I didn't tell him off, obviously. No, it wasn't it's not his fault. cat's fault, fault bless him. Got locked it's in the room. cat's fault. So. Locked in the room. I don't understand Katie sometimes, my cat. You, know, you go down in the morning, I get all these noises, as you well know, uh, mm-hmm, welcoming mm-hmm, noises, mm-hmm. and then she goes to the back door. Right? She's waiting for the back door to be opened. Now, why don't she just go out the front door through the cat flap like she has been doing so all night long? Because I sometimes... She's trained you. She's trained you. Tra- cats train you to what they want you to do. I've, I've read about this, and also I've seen it on the television. Have you seen that television about the, my cat from hell? It's a strange man with a bald head, very, very big head, wears glasses and carries a guitar case around with all cat toys in. No. Have you seen that program? Oh, it's awful, dear. He's absolutely... He'll drive a pink Cadillac. But anyway, he says that cats train their owners to do things, and it's true. You know, like my cats. If I put cheap food down, I very rarely buy cheap food for my cats. But if I put cheap food down, they look at me with disgust. <laughs> they train me to do things. Oh, which reminds me, uh, you might as well have those cat biscuits back. She's not eating them. I don't know. She just she only wants her um her wet food but at the, the moment. The thing is, yeah, the thing is, is they go through phases. I mean, they must get bored with the same food. I mean, I try and change my cat food. You know, I do one one fish one day and meat the next day, etc., etc. Because they must get bored with it. You know, they can't. It's like us. I mean, what if we just ate beef burgers every day or soya burgers every day? Do you know what I mean? You know, you'd get bored with well, it. So I, I try and give my cats I variety. Do. Do you know what I mean, dear? I Variety do. Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> uh, Daniel's got a question for you. Um, Daniel wants to know, are you really skint, like we said on yesterday's video? Am I really what? Skint. Oh, yeah, I'm penniless, dear. Penniless. penniless. Absolutely on Absolutely the breadline. Absolutely penniless. Breadline. <laughs> Bre- bordering breadline. I go through next door's bins, and they've got a child with <laughs> shitty nappies. So, is that, yeah, very bad, is dear. That, <laughs> What's your language? Is that is that next door that hasn't paid for our fence? For your no, fence? Dear, it's not next door that hasn't paid for the fence. It's the oh, other side. The, you know, the, I the must, pilot. I must, the, the, the I, pilot, dear. I must tell, uh, Ronnie had a new fence put up. He paid for a new fence last year uh, between him and the neighbour next door. And the neighbour next door said she'd give him half the money. Never came. And that's over no. a year now, isn't it? Yep. You must be able to do something to the fence so that it looks crap on her side now or something like that. Well, I know that. the cats go over there and shit in her garden. Please stop using that word on this programme. It is a oh, family sorry, sorry. orientated. Defecate. We might have Defecate Shania listening. Garden. Shania doesn't want to hear that sort of language on here. Uh, Dad yeah, Simon will have defecate. something to say about that in a minute. I'm they, sure I, I mean, I'm not being funny. I've defecated on her front grass a few times because of it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Defecation, defecation, dear. <laughs> On her front lawn, you have. Oh, yeah, be have careful, to. there might be cameras, dear, cameras. Oh, no, I've only got cameras on my side <laughs> to keep away the peasants. <laughs> Did you like my, you like my little windmills? I, I, I suppose people have stolen them round there. Because you get a lot of that round where you live, don't you? you know, we don't, uh, get, no, they're in the back garden. We don't get anything stolen outside outside of our houses. You're closer it? to Holland, you're, you're closer to, to Great Holland's, dear. You're they the don't, one that people don't know what Great, Great Holland's is. Holland's. They don't know what Great Holland's is. They've no idea what you're talking about. It's a about, mass yeah. council estate about one street away from Chris's house. 
<laughs> you wait one day I'll be in a big mansion doing this in in like a conservatory thing the the the, the crystal studios or something like that the crystal the crystal maze the crystal maze I've got my I've got my that. gun here ready to stick up my purple my new purple background a little bit later on. I might pop up later. What time are you going to bed? Are you working tonight? No, I'm not. Yet. I'm, I'm. I'm actually going to. I'm going to tidy my. Oh, my just house a minute. Up a little bit. Just a minute. Just a minute. I can hear barking going on outside. Oh, it's not in my house, dear. Can you hear that? No, barking. dear. Anyway, yeah, carry on, so carry I'm on. Going to, I'm going to have a little tidy up, then I'm going to get my hair and my beard cut. Right. And then I'll be home in a little while later. Oh, okay. Then I won't come up then. Well, I might pop into you then. I'll pop into you on the way back. OK, what time would that be? Oh, I don't know. C- good couple of hours, probably by about... What time are you going, what time are you going to, to get your beauty sleep? To bed? Four. Hello? I'll, po- I'll probably go in be- bed about four. OK, I'll be before then, dear. I'll, I'll let you know when I'm on my way. OK. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure listening to you. I can't really say that I've been speaking to you because I couldn't get a word in edgeways, to be honest. Well, dear, it's about time that I managed to get a word in edgeways because as soon as you get in the car, you start talking to other people on the phone, dear. It's a very busy person, very important person. Very yeah, the important. Thing is, the thing is, is I'm not your chauffeur. You are. You're all... to talk to me, not talk to others You're on the just phone. the driver. How dare you. Just How the driver. How dare you, dear. Anyway, it's been lovely talking to all of you people. And if you have any questions, please email questions to Chris Reardon and he will gladly pass them on to, uh, pass them on to me for you. For, oh. for you. Dad... Okay, listeners, viewers, friends... Family, colleagues, all of you lovely people, thank you. Is that it? Yes, I've said my piece now. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. If you, if you switch thank you for com- taking the call. If you go back to your computer very quickly, you'll be able to hear yourself because there's a 30 second delay. Isn't that exciting? Isn't it, dear? But yes, um, thank you. Thank you for taking the call. Thank you. Bye bye, caller. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. So lovely to speak to you. Bye bye. And you. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Has he gone? Oh, God. Can't get a blooming word in Edgewood. That's what it's like in the car. Chat, chat, chat in your ear all the time. Uh, Daniel says he knows where Great Hollands is. Oh, it's only down the road, Great Hollands. Nothing so bad. Oh, Shania is with us this morning. She says, you and Ron are so funny. Shania, I must apologise about his disgusting toilet mouth. I really must. Simon says, me and Tina Turner is a waxwork. Not like Barry Manilow, made of plastic. Barry Manilow's not made of plastic, how dare you? He's not. Nothing wrong with the way Barry Manilow looks. There isn't. Thank you, Simon. You know, I'm, I'm looking at your picture at the moment, Simon. To be honest, I think you could have a little bit of work done on that face of yours, couldn't you? Eh? You know, a couple of hundred thousand pounds should sort that up. Sell the house. <laughs> When Shania leaves, just sell the house and get your face sorted. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, must say hello today to Vicky Gannon, who's in New York. Good morning, Vicky. He says, good morning, Chris. What a wonderful week of shows. Lots of laughs and some serious moments as well. Wonderful. Many thanks. Yes, uh, 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 Vicky is referring to our short videos that we do every day. Uh, you can find those by going to United Kingdom Talk TV dot co dot UK. United Kingdom Talk TV dot co dot UK. Every day except Sunday, there's a brand new short video, usually about three, four, five, five minutes long, something like that. And there's one of those every day on there. Um, some of them are funny, some of them are serious. Never know what I'm going to do really until the day arrives. All right, so do have a look at those and uh, feel free to leave comments or, or send emails in about them. All right, once again, United Kingdom Talk TV dot co dot UK. Vicky says, just one question. I can't wrap my mind around the logic of buying a super fancy super big TV on instalments over a three year period. I'm assuming uh, Vicky is talking about, I think yesterday's video where we were talking about a, a, a company called Bright House. OK, it's a large shop. And you can go in and buy stuff and pay weekly. But over the period of weeks that you buy the item, you can be paying two, three times the cost of actually buying the item outright. Now, when I was a child, 
uh, mum and dad, I think at that time you would rent, most people rented a television. So you rented the television. If you couldn't afford the rent, you sent the telly back. Simple as that. You know, and then people started buying televisions and you would buy a television according to what you could afford. So if you could only afford a 20 inch telly, you'd buy a 20 inch telly. Whereas now, it's all so easy to go into like a place like Bright House or we'll have that 65-inch telly, which, you know, the people can't afford to buy that outright, so they buy it over a period of time, and it can cost them thousands. A, a £600 television can end up costing them £3,000 over three, or three years or so. And I don't know how we got into into buying stuff that we can't really afford. Vicky says, I'm assuming that they get to take the TV home when they start paying for it. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Here in America, you can buy things on layaway where you can put down a deposit on an item and the store holds it until you complete the payments over a fixed period of time. I remember hearing a lot about that when I was growing up. But like you, my parents only bought things that they could pay for on the spot. Yes, I remember that sort of thing as well, uh, Vicky, where you would go into a shop, perhaps... Oh, yes, that's just coming to me in my mind. Um, yes, I remember one year I wanted a bicycle for Christmas and I think my dad went into the bicycle shop and, and paid down a certain amount of money before Christmas. And he would continue to pop in there, you know, weekly or whatever, uh, paying them bits of money. And at Christmas time, you, you've paid for your bike and out of the shop it comes. So you've still paid for it before you've got it. I, re I remember that. Vicky says, if you shop at Bright Store, at that rate, the technology changes. Couldn't that now be, that TV be old technology by the time the last payment is made? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, my Ron has just bought this, uh, is it 65? 50, I can't, oh, no, 55. I think he's just bought a 55-inch telly, and it's got the 3D on it, and the um, internet thing, apps and things like that on it, right? So he's just bought that. But I was out last yesterday, and I noticed there are now 4K TVs, which are like super high definition. So we've moved on again. And he's only just bought it. Already it's outdated. So, you know, but the other thing on that side of the coin, I would say to you, you know, don't keep waiting for the next thing because you'll never buy anything. It's just the way it is at the moment with televisions and that. So, yes, indeed, and certainly at the end of those three years, that technology will have changed. Vicky says, look at how much technology has changed with phones. You can record shows anywhere with a little help from some electrician's tape. Unless you live in a castle or have super bad eyesight, why do you need a TV that big? Looking forward to the show, uh, Vicky. So thank you, Vicky, for that um, uh, email there. Um, I've got a 50 downstairs. And... Vicky, I must say, I, I had a 32-inch for years and years and years. And I thought, I, I thought to myself, oh, I don't need a big TV. Don't, don't really need a big TV. Then Ron, Ron had one when he lived in East London. After being at his house and watching that TV, and then coming home to your 32, that's when you want the bigger one. It, it does make a difference. I mean, it really does. Not... Forget going in shops and, oh, it looks a bit big and all that. No, what you need to do, Vicky, is go round someone's house and look at the big telly when they've got a great big blooming telly in there. And then you come back home to your little one and think, oh, it's a bit small, you know. And the, and the quality and all that, the picture of it is better as well. So I, I think, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I, I wanted a, a bigger TV. So I've had this one now about three years. You know, it's well out of date now. Funny, isn't it? A 50-inch plasma TV is out of date. Strange. Um, Simon says, 
Uh, oh, Dan, sorry, Daniel says, have you mentioned I chose the new web address? Oh, yeah, you got very upset because I forgot to tell you this, Lars. The, the new web address, unitedkingdomtalktv.co.uk, was chosen for me by Daniel and Camberley. All right? You got your mention. There's no prize, Daniel. I'm not about to send you a wad of cash or anything. There's no cash here. <laughs> Simon says, how dare you? Don't you know who I am? I'm a radio personality with a great face for radio. Well, I think we all know that, Simon. Looking at your picture, you carry on doing radio. Whatever you do, never, ever buy a webcam. <laughs> never, ever buy a webcam. All right. Um, we've got some audio uh, being sent in from Cyber John. So let's have a little listen to what he's got to say to us today. All right. Hi, Chris. I hope you don't have a moratorium on politics on your show. After all, it is part of the cornucopia of life. Indeed, there is nothing but massive media coverage of the recent elections, with the BBC being blamed for being Mr Farage's premier advertising agency, in one case, and at the same time being branded as overly biased against the anti-European European member of the vast Leviathan, this is the Brussels Parliament. There, I've said it, the F word, Farage, who is the leader, for your overseas listeners, of an emerging United Kingdom Independence Party. They want to unhitch this country from the European Union due to the perceived control that they have on our border, our laws and our monetary policy. And it costs us £50 million a day to be in that club. As for how popular he is, look on YouTube and search for Nigel calling the bland non-entity of a European president, Herman Van Rompuy, who? a damp rag. And there are over a million hits. I think you can buy Herman Van Rompuy dishcloths on the UKIP website. They're like thin copies of the Turin Shroud with a sad old Belgian man's face. On the other hand, an interview with Nick Clegg leader of the Liberal Democrats and a man whom many seem to believe sold out to acquire the crumbs of power which fall from David Cameron's silver service, you know, in an interview with Nick Clegg on the Andrew Marr show, it gets, wait for it, 487 hits. Just 487. As for the first televised debate between Clegg and Farage on LBC, where huge amounts of mudslinging was as entertaining as it could be, Clegg got a bloody nose. He was brave but stupid to go for round two on the Me Too BBC, the institution which has sadly been plagiarising other radio and TV stations with increasing lack of shame. On this occasion, Clegg got a black eye and egg on his face to go with his earlier punishment. And so-called Putin's friend, Farage, only got an egg thrown at him a few days later. Now, we can debate whether the European Union is forcing 70% of the laws on the UK is a precise and exaggerated statistic. But Clegg said things that were simply untrue. And when he wasn't doing that, he was coming out with the same surgically sterilised lines. And for goodness sake, if you're going to be a clown, Nick, try smiling sometime. This is not a party political broadcast for UKIP, by the way. Far from it. This is an analysis of a moribund political détente, where minor parties with clear messages are attracting attention from voters. Now, UKIP has got its problems and idiots and the odd racists and homophobes and all that kind of thing, which is typical for any fledgling party of its type. It is slowly dealing with the idiots, but then it hasn't been so long when Labour councils were putting political correctness before the safety of children in places like Rotherham and Rochdale, or a Lib Dem MP involved recently in a very unpleasant organisation, or Mr Brown heard calling a pensioner a bigot, or Prime Ministers who were sending our young men and women to join the Americans in terrible wars. No wonder Mr Blair looks so scared since he became a Catholic like me. He knows now what is waiting for him on the other side. Anything that makes the triumvirate at the top of our political scene nervous makes me happy because I'm bored by the rhetoric and not convinced of their governing acumen. Clegg, 
whose first job was, bizarrely enough, lobbying to the UK government on behalf of Libya. Weird Miliband was a TV researcher, and Toff Cameron, ex-marketing director. All, I'm sure you will agree, not obvious traits on the CV of someone wanting to run our economy. But self-made city businessman? I'd have him for Chancellor. That's what Nigel used to do. A favourite game was for interviewers to ask the people at the top what the price of a pint of milk was, and often with quite extraordinary answers showing just how out of touch they were. But the civil servants got wise to it. You know, I watched that Doctor Who episode where the cabinet turned out to be fat green aliens with flatulence problems wearing human suits. I'm sure that was the way that the BBC were making a joke. Or maybe it was a documentary. (coughs) Now, UKIP are never going to fulfil their dream of cessation from the mess that the EU has become. Most people will go back to their usual candidates at national elections. But they are creating a discussion. Indeed, the anxiety in basket cases such as Greece, whose economy has had to be bailed out by Germany because it was so close to the EU, and the Ukraine who were encouraged by the EU to move away from Russia, has produced dangerous nationalistic entities which make our pathetic far-right parties in the UK look like the Women's Institute. The EU may have stopped war in Europe for 70 years, but then it goes and starts another one that could get very nasty. Nigel's party, however, could swing the balance in a national election and they are capable of taking seats away from anyone. I think that British people don't really know what any of the main parties stand for anymore. And so they say to themselves, why should I bother voting? Which is a bad thing. It's not necessarily blatant totalitarianism that scares me. Because, you know, we recognise it and we can fight and undermine it. What frightens me is expansionism dressed up like democracy, which is a modus operandi of the EU Mega state. You know, Chris, I think we missed a trick back in 1952. What better candidate for running the whole show than the young royal lady herself? Have a great night, everybody. God bless. And thanks for a little bit of audio there. Uh, those of you listening on UK Health Radio, you're going to leave us now. Thank you very much uh, for listening to the show. Everyone else, stay where you are. UK Health Radio people, I'll see you next week. Yes. Thank you, um, Cyber John. Poor old Nick. Poor Nick. <laughs> It's all falling apart for that man, isn't it? But the thing is, with this whole Nigel Farage thing, he's different, isn't he? He's absolutely different. All the others look the same. They all sound the same. And let's be honest, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have Ed Miliband round to dinner, would you? <laughs> the food would just be flying everywhere. <laughs> Finally today, um, there was one of the videos I did last week, and it concerned, of of course, because of Facebook and Twitter and everything else, everyone knows what everyone else wants them to know now. You know, you've only got to look at my Facebook wall, and you'll know who I vote for, my political persuasions... You'll know um, a lot about me because I've chosen to to kind of tell you about it. But one thing people were doing while this European election thing was going on, you know, I'm voting for so-and-so. If you vote for so-and-so else, then please unfriend me. I want nothing to do with you. You're not my friend. And all this old crap. And I'm thinking, get real, will you? You know, before Facebook and Twitter, you didn't go into a pub or at a some sort of meeting with lots of other people, maybe, I don't know, something. You know, you, you wouldn't go somewhere 
and say, excuse me, you walk in and say, excuse me, who do you vote for? Oh, I, I, I'm a conservative supporter. Oh, right, please, I'm not going to be your friend. Go away, I don't want to talk to you. So I don't see how that's converted to Facebook. Why would you go on there and say, right, well, if you don't do the, you know, I'm vegetarian. Okay. Over three years now. Don't like how animals are brought up in factory farms. That's the main reason for it. Even but any killing of animal now to me is abhorrent, right? I don't go on Facebook and put a message on there. I'm vegetarian. If you eat me, please unfriend me. I mean, how stupid and pathetic is that sort of line? That's ridiculous. Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. In London has written in the, this morning, who says, Hi, Chris, looking forward to the show. I completely agree with your video last week about people requesting defriend requests just because you might have a different opinion of them or to them. I voted UKIP for the Euro elections and feel like I can't even mention it in case I am accused of being some sort of fascist. Now, all the media, so much of the media, people talking, they keep going on about UKIP being racist or homophobic and all that business. Right, well, let me tell you, I voted for them. I'm certainly not homophobic. And I'm certainly not racist. There are pictures and interviews. Uh, there is a UKIP member called Winston. OK, the clue is in the name. Winston, come on, be honest. It's not a white man's name, is it? It's a black man's name. And he is indeed black. He is a UKIP party member. So I put a photo of that, you know, after this conversation was going on. And of course, you know, the, people have always got a bloody answer, haven't they? Oh, that's just one member. And it was it was a case of this this person replied. I'm not going to say who it was. Uh, this person replied to the message, um, uh, to the discussion on there. You know, that's like saying um, to to try and be in with the crowd. You have a black friend, a Jewish friend, a gay friend, to try and make it sound all right. So, so that was their thing, I was, because it was only one. So they said that, you know, oh, that's only one person. Well, how, how many does it take then? Two, 10, 100, 1,500? There was another comment on there. Let, let, me, let, me, let me read you, let me read you the... Um, If I can just find it now, because it's a couple of days old. I do do post quite a lot on Facebook. If you want to join me on my Facebook, my Facebook wall is Chris. Uh, my Facebook name is Chris Reardon UK. All right, Chris Reardon UK. Um, here we are. Just 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 trying to find what what. Right. So the. The comment I posted was was a re-comment or whatever you call it, a repost, a re-comment from someone else, which I found rather amusing. And I did record the little song. Now, you can find that uh, as yesterday's short video, I think it is. It says UKIP Ditty. I'll, I'll post it on the wall again just after I finish the show for it. UKIP Ditty, and it's to the tune of Dad's Army. And it and it was reposted from Portsmouth UKIP supporters. It says, who do you think you are kidding, Mr. Cameron? If you think we're on the run, we are the boys who will stop your EU game. And we are the boys and UKIP is our name. So who do you think you are kidding, Ed and Cleggy? Now you're on the run again. So I just posted that, just the words. Honestly, the abuse that came from that is another one. I'm not voting UKIP because I'm not an arrogant, bigoted, racist halfwit with the IQ of a cornflake. So I am gay. I've been out with black boyfriends. But as I vote UKIP, I'm racist and homophobic. Don't get it. You're not making sense. 
And the other one, there was another comment there that someone simply said, I feel sorry for you, Chris. Just, I just don't get it. I do wonder if anyone indeed has unfriended me because of that. Because of posting that. It actually doesn't even say that I voted for them. It doesn't even say that anywhere on my wall. I've told you that now. It doesn't say that anywhere on my wall. When I post a comment on Facebook, I don't delete things unless they're offensive to someone else. You can attack me as much as you want. I'll leave it up there for all to see. Okay? If you attack someone else who might be offended and might be a friend of mine or someone like that, I will remove it. You can attack them on their own wall. Don't attack other people on my wall. Because that's just unfair. They might not see it. Attack them on their own wall, okay? Don't attack anyone else on my wall. Unless it's a celebrity or someone like that, and that's fair game. Especially Z list for If you ever want to say anything about Katie Price or um, any of the members of The Only Way is Essex, you feel free to post that on my wall, my darlings. Because we could all do with less of that on the telly. <clears throat> but to unfriend someone for having a different... If, if you've had a big row with someone, then fair enough. But to unfriend someone who's got a completely different opinion to yourself of, of anything, not just politics, anything at all, I think is a little bit small-minded. And some of the comments sometimes, you know, you, you, you kind of think, to yourself, well, why, have you, why have you put that? What's it to do with you? People put comments on people's walls. Um, sometimes I think just for the sake of putting something on there. You know, I might put something on there later and someone else might put, well, I don't know anything about that, but... Uh, uh, uh. Well, if you don't know anything about it, why even comment? Don't be so stupid. As I say, I, I rarely... In fact, I don't. I don't remove anything on my wall. If you want to say something on there, you feel free to say something on there. And do remember, right, if you put a post on the wall and you change your mind and take it off as well, we do get emails telling us what the post was. The email doesn't disappear. So if you've put something on there, and if, oh, maybe I shouldn't have put that, and take it off again, I've got the email telling me what you originally posted on there. So don't think it just disappears. But it is very, very silly, I think, to, to defriend someone because they have a difference of opinion. You, know, you might have gotten with someone for years and years and years. And, you've, and then someone says, and, because, and this is all due to Facebook and Twitter. Sometimes I wonder, is it such a good thing after all? Because I'm sure it creates rows. Back to this uh, little message from Jonathan. As he was saying, I voted UKIP and I feel I can't even mention it in case I'm accused of being some sort of fascist. The real fascists are people who don't let you have your own opinion. At work... I get criticised for reading the Daily Mail online. Now, I read that all the time. I, too, you say, oh, I saw this article in a... Oh, no, you don't read the mail, do you? Yes, I do. I do. I do read the day every single day. <laughs> I'm logged on all day, every day, to the Daily Mail website. I love it. So there, stick that up yourself. Jonathan says, I don't have a go at people reading The Guardian. And I, I read The Guardian as well. All online. I read the, the Mail, The Guardian, The Independent, The Daily Mirror, The Daily Express. I read them all online. All of them. So go on, uh, choose which one do you want to have a go at for, for reading. Because there's five so far. I used to read The Sun online. Unfortunately, you have to pay for that. And you know I'm a bit tight with the old Wonga. I'm not paying to read The Sun online. <laughs> Make it free and I'll read it again. 
I also occasionally, and you'll hate me for this one, I do have a little look at the Daily Star. Although, to be honest, um, you know, I've been reading, looking at that one for over a year now, and I've yet to find any item of news in it. <laughs> I read them all online. Why is it because someone might say, I read the Daily Mail, that immediately you pigeonhole them into this little thing. You immediately got an idea of what they're like. You have no idea what people are like. Just because they read a certain newspaper. What a load of old rubbish you talk. Or do a certain thing, or vote a certain way, or go out to a certain club. Surely we as people are a combination of many, many, many things. And just because someone likes drinking doesn't make them an alcoholic. Surely, OK, so I tell you, I go swimming. I, I, I go swimming. I go swimming. That doesn't make me super fit like Tom Daly, does it? Just because I might like Nick Clegg doesn't mean I like everything that he says. And people are pigeoned into this, these little boxes by other people and I just don't understand why. Jonathan goes on to say, I don't have a go at people reading The Guardian, so what gives the people the right to have a go at me? It's so patronising when people assume you think in a certain way just because of what you read or how you vote. And it's, it's so, so true. Another example. One, two, three, four. Four, down, four doors down and in the road to the left of me live a biker family. They've got big bikes outside. Never been on a motorbike in my life. They've got big bikes on there. Sometimes I see them, and it's a family. These are not young people, OK? They, they must be near my age. I would say they're a little bit older, probably... Uh, sorry, a little bit younger. Uh, Mid-40s, mid to late 40s. They got the big bikes, they got the big black leather jackets. You hear the bikes sometimes. <laughs> not at all days, not all hours, you know. If they're going out somewhere, off they go. They are such nice people. Such nice people. But there are other people that would see them driving along and think, oh my God, airy bikers, horrible people. No, they're not. Don't judge a book by its cover. Find out a little bit more about them. Daniel says, the star. How can you show your face in Waitrose again? Uh, well, <laughs> because they don't sell it in there. <laughs> Daniel, when I go to Waitrose, I pick up my free copy of the Daily Mail or the Guardian. Sometimes I get the Guardian as well. And also, actually, in, in, the, uh, in Waitrose, in the paper rack, they do sometimes have copies of The Sun, although I've no, I don't think they sell them because they've moved it all around. We can't find the newspapers in Waitrose anymore. They've moved them around somewhere, and I'm not quite sure where. Where have the newspapers gone in Waitrose, please? Someone tell me. Daniel says it's little for you now. We don't have a little round here, thank you. Believe it or not, they've got one in Crowthorn. A little in Crowthorn. God's sake, what is the word coming for? Simon says, you're not my friend anymore because of the face, the jokes about his face needing done. He said, you could do with a few nips, nips and tucks yourself. Where? Where do I need nips and tucks? Look, 51 years old, no work done on my face yet, and look how young I look, you know. I was nearly taken off hair once for being too young. It's l l too young looking. That's the truth of it. <laughs> there we are. Okay. Um, 
Uh, Vicky says, I think I'm just out of touch where TVs are concerned. We were talking about big TVs. When I had to get the stove replaced last year, I asked them to take the TV away and they did. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'll read that again. I think I'm just out of... <laughs> Vicky, what are you saying here? I think I'm just out of touch where TVs are concerned. When I had to get the stove replaced last year, I asked them to take the TV away. What's... <laughs> <laughs> so, you got a new cooker and they took the television away? <laughs> Vicky, what are you going on about, dear? Uh, so what do you do now? Cook instead of watch the television? Oh, you'll get ever so fat, dear. <laughs> when I had the stove replaced, Darcy, I asked them to take the TV away and they did. It was old style, very heavy to lift. Oh, they were. Those old tellies were very heavy. And I haven't missed it. But that probably means I work too much. Which, oh, what do you do? Put things in the oven and watch that now. Or alternatively, Vicky, you can always put the wash. Have you got a washing machine? Put that on and watch that going round. Hours of entertainment, my love. Hours. <laughs> right, we're nearly finished now, boys and girls. I've just got one more story to um, uh, to read to you. Oh, is there another message? Have we done messages? We've done, we've done messages now, haven't we? We've done messages. One more story to tell you, boys and girls. And this actually comes from the Daily Mirror. All right, see, I read all the papers, all of them. Get a bit from everything, and then you make up your own mind about the world. All right? I love this story in the Daily Mirror. The bingo caller, car bingo game carries on after pensioner drops dead as horrified players told to keep marking their cards. This is in today's Daily Mirror. A bingo game carried on as normal, despite a pensioner suffering a fatal heart attack in front of 200 horrified players. This person was 87 years old, collapsed in an aisle at the Gala Bingo Hall in Derby. Shocks players were told to... Shocks players, do me a favour. Were told to carry on marking their cards, even as paramedics performed CPR... On the unconscious woman. The bingo caller even told traumatised customers to leave if they were not happy after several shouted for the game to stop. Do me a favour, someone's done bad reporting here. Have you ever been to a bingo game? In a big bingo place, I don't know, like the top rank or mecca, something like that. Or gala bingo. Have you ever been to one of those places which is full of pensioners? Let me tell you this. Nothing stops that game playing for those pensioners. They wouldn't allow it. It didn't matter if there were bombs being dropped by Russia or missiles coming over here. Their pensioners would not allow that game to stop. So I think that's a bad, re <laughs> bad report in there. Poor old soul. Imagine that dying in the middle of a bingo game. I shouldn't laugh. Dying, but they were probably happy. They were probably very happy to go like that, weren't they? They were in a bingo hall playing, doing something they loved, and they did. What a lovely way to go. I haven't decided how I want to go yet. Possibly doing one of my shows. I don't know. The, the viewing figures would go for the roof then, wouldn't they? I'd, you know, just, I'd be gone like that. How would, someone would have to ring up, wouldn't they? Anyway, I'm going to go now. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening to the show today. I've got a couple of emails here, one from James and uh, one from Millie that I shall read out probably in the short videos next week. Don't forget, you can find those short videos at unitedkingdomtalktv.co.uk. unitedkingdomtalktv.co.uk.
Uh, there's an email address if you've been watching a recording of the show then it'd be wonderful to hear from you. And we always read out, usually, although I haven't got around to these two today, we usually read out the emails um, uh, in the next live show or during the little shows during the week, OK? You can email the programme, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you for another live show next week at 12 o'clock Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. Once again, United Kingdom Talk TV.co.uk. Thanks for watching and listening. Have a lovely Saturday. Bye bye. <laughs>